Hello, this is Sana, and thanks so much for joining me to make zucchini bread or courgette bread. Um, it is an unusual flavor to think about putting um, squash together in something that would be a treat. Um, I do remember very vividly my first experience with zucchini bread. I was eight years old and my mother's good friend, who's a gardener, uh, made loads of zucchini bread and brought over a loaf. And my little eight-year-old brain looked at that and said, what <laughs> is that? Um, how can a vegetable be a treat? Um, my mother, being such a great mother as she was, um, said, just try one bite. And I did take one bite, and it's now been a lifelong favorite, um, something that I love to make every year. Um, and I think you'll agree, it is just that combined moistness, that great texture that it's got, um, together with the flavor of all those wonderful spices and baking ingredients, vanilla, cinnamon, of course sugar, um, but then really filled out with all those um, more uh, earthy notes like what comes from the zucchini um, and if you add uh, walnuts, which I will today, that whole wood woody kind of taste. So it's got a real good full spectrum. Um, you know, think pumpkin spice, uh, for example. Um, it really has got that nice round taste. There's no coincidence that my mother's friend was a gardener. Um, because as any gardener knows, um, when zucchini is ready, it is ready. And you may not be ready to have so much of it um, fresh and ready to eat um, all at that same time. And there's not a lot of really great ways to preserve zucchini, um, except for in zucchini bread. So you can make nice batches of it um, and it will freeze well. So we'll make today um, two loaves. Um, and those two loaves you can eat right away fresh. Um, they last about two days um, on the counter or in the fridge. Remember, it's a real moist cake, so it does actually last a little bit less um, long as um, some other cakes. Um, so do think about um, putting some in the freezer. It freezes exceptionally well. Um, and you can do that, I love to do it just in slices so you can grab them out when you want them, um, or like in a half loaf so that you can pull it out, um, have it ready to have, you know, breakfast, your 11Zs, your um, afternoon snack and even dessert um, right from that um, half loaf, or consider um, making mini loaves. Um, learn this from my, um, my father's friend, Mel, who loves to bake and um, give away his loaves. Um, he makes these in little mini loaf packages, but also perfect size for freezing, pulling one out, and um, using it um, whenever you'd like to have a wonderful, wonderful cake um, at any time. So let's get started. Um, I've put together um, all the ingredients and also all the um, elements that I'll need for making the zucchini bread. I really like to follow that uh, principle of mise en place, um, and that means everything in its place. It just makes the um, cooking and um, baking experience so much nicer when everything's at your fingertips and just ready to go. Collect all the ingredients and tools that you'll need for the whole job, and you'll find that whole list at the blog on readyandthriving.com. Um, so let's start with um, preparing the tins. Um, today I'm gonna make two loaves, one with a real beautiful um, loaf pan. Um, so this one we'll just need to um, spray with oil. I like to use oil, particularly for um, these types of um, breads because we use oil in the recipe whenever we're using um, vegetables or squash of any kind um, in bread, so it's just a real nice compliment. Um, but then I'll also use a normal kind of loaf pan. Um, this is a regular uh, American size um, loaf pan. Um, so kind of medium size. And I'll prepare it also with um, not only um, a bit of oil in there, but also put parchment paper in, then I can just pull it right on out. Um, makes it so easy. Um, you could do the exact same with the mini loaves, um, but today I'm going to just make the two big loaves, um, one for myself and one to share. And uh, think about doing that yourself because maybe there's another eight-year-old girl out there 
ready to um, learn about a new flavor experience. Okay, so we'll start with just a little bit of oil in those pans, get those pans ready to go. And don't be like the folks on the uh, baking shows who only do a little spritz. Do put enough in so that it actually works um, and we'll allow it to come out easily. Um, I'll also, as mentioned, put in the parchment paper um, into that um, rectangular pan to make it just that much easier um, to pull out. Uh, we also want to get the oven going. Um, so we set it for 350. Um, and so I'll get that going right away. This recipe only takes about 15 minutes, so we want to get that um, oven up to temperature um, in plenty of time. So let's get started. Um, I have not yet grated um, my uh, zucchinis or my courgettes, um, so I will do so. Um, I will take a little bit off that end. I'll keep this end because that's something that gives me more to hold on to um, when I'm actually grating. Um, so I'll do that now. We need um, two cups of zucchini um, to go into that, and I use just the large size um, of the grater. Um, to get those nice big pieces. So you'll note that I also did not um, peel the zucchini at all. We actually do want to have that um, mix of nice texture that comes from having the skin. Um, and also we do want to get every little bit of it, so even the seeds inside. Now the one exception to that is if you have um, grown them in the garden yourself and they have gone a bit large. Uh, they can become, you know, larger than your arm, for example. Um, when they're that size, you may want to scoop out some of those seeds um, because there may be too much moisture. Um, but don't worry about having um, too much moisture just from a regular um, zucchini um, or courgette um, because we actually want to use that moisture. You know, some um, recipes of other types of cakes will have a variety of things that lend themselves to the moisture. The main thing that um, gives that moisture uh, for this cake is actually the, the vegetable itself. So we want to have that um, wonderful um, uh, moisture coming directly from that cake, from the zucchini. So I want to get about two cups um, of zucchini. So let's give it a quick check here. That looks about right. Um, I will make sure that it is just right. And that came from about one kind of medium size um, zucchini or courgette. So don't need to do too many. And as you can see, if you do have a lot in the garden, then you may have an awful lot of zucchini bread that you can make. So we've got that now prepared. I also had um, full half walnuts, um, which I then chopped down to a more manageable size um, because we do want to have um, a real nice bite down on them. Now we've got everything prepared. Um, all the rest of the items just need to be measured and um, put into um, the actual um, cake. All the ingredients you need will be found in your pantry. Now let's put together the dry ingredients. I'm going to start with two cups of flour and um, if you have them, use um, this type of measuring um, tool um, as you can level it off nicely and they are made for the dry ingredients themselves. Um, this will um, help you to make sure you've got the right amounts, which is so critical to baking. Um, the other thing about this is I'm not sifting the flour. Um, for a lot of cakes, I would do so um, to make them nice and light and fluffy, but we aren't going for that. We're going for nice, um, moist, um, dense, and you know, really kind of a succulent type of cake. Um, so don't need to um, sip the flour, just use regular all-purpose flour, perfect. Um, likewise, use just a regular um, granulated sugar. Um, you can use a baking sugar if you'd like. Um, a, a caster sugar um, or a regular granulated sugar, just a cup and a half, again using um, the dry ingredients measuring device here. 
um, to make sure that I've got nice um, level uh, amounts and the perfect amount of um, sugar, which is one and a half cups. And now we'll add the um, baking soda, which is um, two teaspoons, um, again, level um, teaspoons um, into the dry ingredients. We'll do also one teaspoon, level teaspoon of salt. Just a regular type of um, uh, salt is good here. If you do use um, something like kosher salt, you may need a bit more. Um, and then one tablespoon, a full tablespoon um, of cinnamon. I put it all together and I just wanna make sure that what I'm doing here is combining it all well together. Um, do this before you're actually combining it into the wet ingredients and that makes sure that you really get those great um, cinnamon flavors all the way through and that you don't have any strange pockets of the baking soda. So now we've got the dry ingredients all set and now it's time to combine everything. So we start with the um, mixer and we start by putting in the um, three eggs. So I've just mixed the eggs. I did that on high for a couple of minutes. Um, and that's really just to whip a little bit of air into them. We don't need to whisk them up, um, but really to get them a bit fluffy. Um, and then we'll add the rest of the um, wet ingredients. Um, so one tablespoon of vanilla. three quarters cup of um, vegetable oil. And I like to use a real um, neutral one, um, such as safflower oil um, or something like that. If you do have walnut oil, of course, that would be really delicious um, and could also be a great um, choice for this. Um, and then we'll also add in the zucchini. And now let's get that all mixed together. So now we've just mixed that for about three minutes and it's nice and light and frothy. All the zucchini pieces are still fully intact um, and that we've been able to do with a mixing attachment. Really important to use that. You don't want to use a whisking attachment or something else that may actually beat up the um, zucchini or um, create a particularly bad texture once we start adding um, the dry ingredients. Now we are, have the luxury of um, being a bit flexible in terms of, you know, mix it around for two minutes, five minutes, what have you, uh, while just the wet ingredients are there. Because what you're doing is just kind of adding a bit of air, getting things thoroughly mixed. But now we're gonna be adding the dry ingredients, which do include wheat flour, which means that um, they, you could, if you, um, mixed it too long, turn it almost into a, like a real bread um, instead of a nice cakey texture. So this is where you get to keep the right texture, keep it really moist and really nice and soft and succulent. So we don't want to take too much time in getting this in, but we can't just dump it all in and um, hope for the best. We do have to put it in a little bit at a time. So we'll just start to add that at more of a medium speed or lower speed. Actually, that's all it took was being able to add that as it mixed at kind of a medium to low speed. Um, I'm just going to get in here now and scrape the bowl just to make sure that everything is combined, um, that we get all the pieces together. There's nothing hiding at the bottom of the bowl. And we'll just turn it on again for a very short time just to keep that texture, make sure it doesn't um, get tough or too bread-like. Just one small last mix. Looks good. 
So the last thing we want to do before we put it into the low pass is to take our mixture and to add in those walnuts. Um, we don't want to use the mixer at this point. We just want to combine them in nicely. So um, just take that spatula, stir them in, make sure they're all fully covered um, and moist um, and really throughout the entire batter. But again, no need to mix too rigorously. And in fact, we want to avoid that um, to keep that nice soft texture. And now we can just pour it into the loaf pans. Um, have a quick look at them before, make sure that they've still got that great oil coating. If they do need to be refreshed a bit, just spray a little bit more on. Um, but now let's just spread those between the two. So now I've just um, poured the batter into the two different loaf pans. I wanna flatten these out to make sure that they're consistent uh, within their own tin. So now I just put those into the oven that had already preheated to 350 degrees and I put them into the um, middle shelf. That's quite important for cakes um, of any kind. You want them to bake as evenly as possible all the way throughout too far to the bottom and they'll be close to a heat source, which may mean the tin gets too hot um, and bakes um, too much around the bottom, giving a really hard edge, or too close to the top can do something similar and really fry up that top edge. So make sure you use that middle um, area for any type of cake baking. Um, you'll get so much better results. So the zucchini bread has been cooking for about 55 minutes. And now I want to check those. Completely clean. So they are both finished. Fantastic. They look amazing. Um, I will go ahead and pull this one out. Um, nice and easy because it's got that parchment paper um, on that loaf and that will allow it to, to cool even more quickly. Um, we'll leave it on that paper for now because they're still kind of tender. The pan with the more complex patterning, I'll actually leave it in the pan a bit um, to let that cool down a bit more within that shape. And that will help it to actually um, really firm up in that shape a bit more and it'll be easier um, to tip out. So we'll do that in about five to 10 minutes um, and then we'll let them um, cool basically to room temperature um, before we just slice in and can start to enjoy them. So the zucchini bread has been cooling now uh, for about an hour. I can still feel a little bit of warmth, but it's in pretty good shape now. It's in a good place to be able to um, cut it now and to try it out. Um, so here is the loaf that used the um, a special Nordic pan and you can see it's got lots of nice kind of crispy bits on there so that'll be delicious. Um, you'll also see on this side which was the top as it was baking has a really nice um, crust and also a little bit of a crack and that's pretty typical of a great uh, zucchini bread. And doesn't that look amazing? So you can see the nice small parts of um, walnuts. You can still see a bit of the zucchini in there. And oh, it smells so amazing. 